Welcome up! In this episode we will talk about governments, their various forms and functions, and the way they come into place. Coming up! Hello, I'm Understanding Politics, and in this channel I explain political theories and debates to students as well as curious and passionate people, just like you. The word government has a long history, coming from the Latin gubernare, meaning direct, rule, and before from the ancient Greek kiberna, as the act of piloting a ship. In fact, the government, or executive, is an organ that through its ministers guides the state by offering inputs for laws discussed in parliament, executing them, and administering most of the aspects of the life of a society. A thing that may surprise the viewers that are not familiar with politics in the United States is that the word government there is rather uncommon. In fact, you will hear more frequently the word administration to identify the president and the cabinet. Let's start by explaining a controversial concept. In English, we can only talk of forms of governments. This is very confusing, because regardless you are talking about how power is distributed in the society or how the government actually takes place, you use the same expression. Italian and Romance languages in general are here more precise. We talk of form of state to explain how power is concentrated and administered in the society. In other words, this expression defines the relationship between the political community, the people, and the authorities meaning that a state can be democratic or authoritarian. This is an essential distinction. On the other hand, forms of governments differentiate in consideration of the relationship that the government entertains with the electorate and other organs of the state. Therefore, a government can be parliamentary, presidential, semi-presidential and directorial. This is just a formal slash legal distinction, because a dictatorship or autocratic state can have a semi-presidential form of government, such as Russia. If you say that constitutional monarchy and a presidential democracy are two forms of government, you may confuse people, because you are showing formal distinctions. But maybe both countries are liberal democracies, making them much more similar than the initial distinction showed. That's why when I talk about these distinctions, I prefer the expression form of state, as in my native language, while if I talk about forms of government, I'm talking about more technical differences entailing the executive. So, back to governments. If a government is parliamentary, the head of the government does not coincide with the head of state. And this stems from the idea that a head of government represents a part, often the majority, of the population, but not in its entirety. On the other hand, the head of state, which can be often a president, but also a monarch, represents the state, and while it does not hold much power in practice, acts in accordance with the norms and values of the constitution. In this system, the government is not elected by citizens, but by the parliament, and therefore it often represents the majority of forces in parliament. There are also cases of minority governments, but they are often a temporary fix, adopted before more stable solutions are found. The head of government chooses the ministers, and if the head of state approves, the ball is thrown in the yard of the parliament that needs to vote the confidence to the government. While during the life of the government, ministers can be replaced and the parliament can vote for their removal, the government falls whenever loses a vote of confidence, which is whenever the prime minister does not have the confidence of the parliament. If a government falls, it does not mean that the state will hold new elections automatically. If the parliament has a proposal for a new government, the head of state might decide not to summon new elections. It is quite normal to have governments that last less than an elected parliament in a parliamentary system. On the other hand, a directorial government is a government where the leadership is shared by more than one representative. Nowadays, the only known directorial governments worldwide are Switzerland and San Marino. San Marino has a peculiar structure with two capital regents, elected by the parliament every six months, which are at the same time heads of government and heads of state. As for the last example, in a presidential government, the head of state and the head of government is the same person. For this reason, the president is always elected directly by the electorate, normally in a separate election. 
Another difference with the parliamentary government is that there, the president is not necessarily elected by the citizens, but it can be elected by a two-thirds majority of the parliament, as in the case of Italy. Of course, if the country has a monarch, then nobody needs to be elected. In a presidential government, the elected president has a term that lasts usually four or five years, depending on the country. A prime example here is the United States. A version that stands in between parliamentary and presidential government is the semi-presidential system. Here, president and prime minister share the executive power. For this reason, also in this case, the electorate chooses the president in a specific election. Of course, the prime example of this form of government is offered by nowadays France. So, to wrap up, there are four main forms of governments. Parliamentary, presidential, semi-presidential and directorial. In the parliamentary, the government is elected by the parliament, while in the presidential, the president is elected by the electorate. Head of state and head of government are not always the same person. In presidential systems, the president incarnates both the figures while in other forms, that is not the case. Thanks for watching. As always, the sources will be linked in the references section of this video description. So originally, the curiosity of the day was talking about the shortest government in the history of Europe, and I was going to talk about Italy. But as of today, the 25th of November 2021, I learned about yesterday fall of the government of Sweden, of Magdalena Andersson, and that is probably the world record because it lasted only eight hours.